Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Beth. Good morning, Michelle. I want my audience to know that, and you probably know better than I do, February is American Heart Month, but we also celebrate African American History Month. And Beth and Michelle are here to give us some information because African Americans are at a 45% higher risk of death and disease progressing when needing hospitalization for heart failure. Welcome, ladies, to the Valder Beebe Show, broadcasting live in Dallas, Texas. Hey, thank you so much for having us with uh, Heart Month and African American uh, History Month. This is a very timely conversation. Beth, as a nurse practitioner, I'd love to talk with you because I think you're the new doctor personally. (laughs) Thank you. That's what I believe. (laughs) You guys are smart, you're efficient, you're prepared. So tell me, what is heart failure and its most common symptoms and why African Americans at our increased higher risk? Okay, so, so let's break that down. So heart failure is really a chronic progressive condition where the heart muscle weakens. And when you have this weakened contraction, it cannot push enough blood to your organs and tissue. So it's heart muscle weakness, so to speak. Because of that, right, because of that weakness, you get the symptoms of shortness of breath, fatigue, and you also get swelling or this fluid accumulation. So unfortunately, heart failure patients will often have a lot of swelling in their feet, their ankles, and sometimes even their abdomen. Now, African Americans are at increased risk, and honestly, it's because they tend to have more other uh, comorbid conditions that predispose them to heart failure. So they have other things as well. So in the African-American population, there's a lot of high blood pressure. There's a lot of uh, kidney dysfunction or chronic kidney disease. And honestly, there's a lot of obesity in the heart failure population. So all those factors combined make them at increased risk for developing this chronic condition. I love your explanation of that, so authentic and so candid. Thank you, Beth. I would love to flip over to Michelle. Michelle, you may not know the medical terms, but you know the result of heart failure, if I'm correct. 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 Um, Tell me, give me a little bit of your story. um, My story started about two and a half years ago when I noticed um, shortness of breath, walking just from my building at work across the street, to my parking lot where I had to stop two or three times. Um, And also swelling in my feet and in my ankles, in my legs, fatigue. Um, I then went to my family doctor to talk about maybe it was allergies or something else. But she then referred me over to a cardiologist who uh, did some tests and found out and it was in fact heart failure. Beth, let me ask you, what Michelle is explaining, is this how you catch this condition? And when I say catch, you spot it and you know what it is? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the biggest challenges in heart failure is how do people recognize it? Because the signs and symptoms can be very slow and insidious. So people just often think, gosh, I'm getting older, uh, I'm just slowing down, and they don't take those symptoms seriously. So if you have that constellation of symptoms that Michelle had and that I mentioned, the shortness of breath, the fatigue out of proportion to your activity level and swelling, those are clearly markers of concern and that would definitely be time to talk to your nurse practitioner about your symptoms. Okay, so you define this. The doctor has said this is what you have. And I'm sure the treatment may be different for everyone, but what's the next step? 
So you're right. So we want to get you on uh, treatment as soon as possible with the ultimate goal to prevent the, dis the d uh, disease from getting worse or for the disease to right. progress, and it can. So uh, the three things I think to really uh, focus on today are, number one, to limit salt in your diet, a low salt or low sodium diet. Right. Salt turns your body into a sponge, and a sponge holds on to water. And in heart failure patients, you're already struggling with all this fluid accumulation. So salt needs to be avoided. I think number two, patients need to remember that, you know, the heart is a muscle, just like the muscles in their legs and the muscles in their arms, and you need to use it. And you need to, you need to get physical activity with periods of rest to try to build up your endurance and make your heart stronger. So limiting salt, staying physically active, and then, of course, with any condition, it's medical therapy or medications. So uh, there's some clear medications that have proven benefit in this population. Michelle and I are here today on behalf of Novartis Correct. to talk about one of those medications called Entresto. And it's been proven uh, in a large clinical, clinical trial to keep patients alive longer and out of the hospital when compared to another leading heart failure medication. There was actually a, there was actually a recent study that showed uh, that this drug can be started during hospitalization for heart failure. So although it's a new study and, and there's always limitations to the data, uh, I think it's important to think about that this could be a time uh, to consider that therapy and to talk to your doctor. Now, Michelle's had a great result Correct. Uh, with this therapy, but it's not for everybody. So pregnancy, it's not indicated. If you have a, a severe allergic reaction called angioedema, and if you're on other drugs like ACEs and ARBs, it wouldn't be indicated. So I know that's a lot of complicated stuff. So that, again, is when you talk to your provider and say, hey, I've got these constellation of symptoms. I have or haven't been in the hospital. Is this a therapy or what therapies are right for me and help you to form an individualized treatment plan? Okay, and i got to ask you real quick, what can you, the individual, do? Uh, you said salt, but... You know, what about exercise? What about diet modification? What, what is, I think we have to take responsibility, too. Absolutely. You want, you want patients to be accountable, and you want them to be active and engaged. So you're right. There's a sodium restriction. There's physical activity and exercise. We encourage people to maintain an ideal body weight. So if you're overweight, you know, start huffing and puffing to try to, to lose some weight. Obviously, smoking. Tobacco products, you know, smoking cessation is very important. Limiting alcohol is very important. And then, you know, staying in touch with your health care team. Correct. Talking to your doctors and being aware of your signs and symptoms so you sort of know when you're getting in trouble. Ladies, this has been so wonderful. I could speak with you the whole month of American Heart <laughs> Month. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing your story, Michelle and Beth. Thank you for being such a great nurse practitioner. Like I told you, I love nurse practitioners. Where can my <laughs> audience go online? Thank you so much. So for more information about heart failure, uh, please refer to entresto.com. Ladies, thank you so very much for being my guest on the Valder BB Show and maybe helping us save some lives. I really appreciate this. Thank you for thank having Thank you so us. much. Have a great day.